This is the story of a remarkable discovery. A picture lost for more than 150 years. Found in South Africa in a box of trinkets. Charles Dickens was one of the most famous people in Victorian society and indeed the most popular writer of his day. We didn't think there was anything left to discover. Most of the material associated with him had been found and sits either in public or private collections. But there was one Dickens object that hadn't been discovered, a portrait miniature. We know that the missing portrait was painted for a book called A New Spirit of the Age, which was about the creative genius that was around in early Victorian England, Dickens amongst them. It was painted for the frontispiece of this book, a print, an engraving, and that's the only means by which we can now recall it. It was painted by a female artist, Margaret Gillies, and it was last recorded as being seen in public at the Royal Academy in 1844. We also know that without doubt it was painted at a pivotal moment in Dickens's career. Dickens was 31 years old, already the fated author of Oliver Twist and a tireless social reformer. But he'd just written two flops and he was in trouble. So this is a letter from Dickens writing to Margaret Gillies confirming their appointment uh, for him to come and sit for, for a portrait. It's written in July, uh, a few days before they were due to meet. So, so it appears, you know, just at the time of, of all of this uncertainty in his life, he's sitting on the 25th of July at 12 o'clock to a female artist. Another letter that we've got is from a few months later. It's a letter which is far more newsy and friendly. Tomorrow, Tuesday at three o'clock, I will dutifully present myself, having now got rid almost of a cold which had ridden roughshod, as the newspapers say, over my features. OK, he's a vain man, isn't he? That's right. Uh, would you like me to ask Mr McLeese, that'd be McLeese, the Royal Academician, uh, to look in during the sitting, so he wants a, another major artist to be there. That's right, and MacLeese was a very good friend of Dickens, and Dickens had been very pleased with the portrait MacLeese had done of him a couple of years before. I see, so he, wa he wants to make absolutely sure that Margaret Gillies gets this right. Mm. It shows his investment in making sure it's, it's an image that he wants and the ones that he wants to present to the public. And that fantastic Dickens signature, it's like Queen Elizabeth I, isn't it? Absolutely. He knew he was Charles Dickens, didn't he? There are various versions of Dickens' signature, but that is a particularly good one, with all the flourish at the end. Like the portrait she painted, Margaret Gillies has largely been forgotten. A professional artist, unmarried by choice, she was something of a pioneer, and she shared with Dickens an intense concern for the underbelly of Victorian society. During the months that this portrait was being painted, something astonishing happens. Dickens is hit by a sort of lightning bolt of creativity and starts work on what is arguably his most famous piece of writing, A Christmas Carol. Now, Charles Dickens' first reference to The Christmas Carol in October happens to be on one of the very same days that he's sitting to Margaret for his portrait. So here's a thought. Why shouldn't the pair of them Margaret, a social reformer, Dickens, similarly motivated, have discussed the contents of A Christmas Carol. I mean, could the creation of this portrait have also affected the creation of that great story? Margaret Gillies captured Dickens at this crucial point in his career, when he was sealing his fame for posterity. But it wasn't long before this vitally important portrait was officially missing. This is a letter from Margaret Gillies written in 1886. And you can tell from her handwriting that she is she's mm. an elderly woman at this point. 
she's writing to Frederick Kitten, who is uh, researching um, Dickens, and he's going to produce a book with lots of illustrations showing different portraits of the novelist. Kitten had written to Gillies to try and find out where this miniature was, because it just hadn't been seen since it was exhibited. So this is her response. Mm. And here she says it. I have lost sight of the portrait itself. So this is where the trail really begins. Where did it go? Why did it disappear? People knew about it, and they wanted to get access to it. Absolutely. After 1886, no more was heard of the portrait. Until now. As you can imagine, we get dozens of emails every day asking us for our opinion on, on paintings and, and miniatures. And somebody in South Africa who had contacted me a couple of times already with some miniatures sent me an email uh, with an image of this incredibly dirty portrait miniature that he'd found in his local auction house in, in South Africa. The auction house had absolutely no idea what it was. I think it was even just catalogued as, as a box of household items. The portrait wasn't even singled out. When the image came up on my screen, I saw a very young, handsome Victorian gentleman staring back at me with these wonderful, quite intense eyes. It really did stop me in my tracks. Even obscured by mould, it was clear that this must be Margaret Gillies's lost original. Both the technique and the distinctive mount matched known examples by Gillies. Crucially, there was also a link between the artist and South Africa. The brothers-in-law of Gillies' own adoptive daughter were early arrivals in the British colony of Natal, now KwaZulu-Natal. They settled in the very place where the miniature was found. When the portrait uh, arrived from South Africa, which was an incredibly exciting moment, the miniature had obviously been neglected for many, many years. The paint that, that artists used, particularly in the 19th century, had a lot of gum mixed in with the watercolour, and this can attract mould and grow mould, and, and it was a particularly um, sort of virulent, nasty yellow mould. So we gave it to a very experienced conservator who also works for the Victoria and Albert Museum, and he has managed to rescue it, and I think it's pretty much back to its, its original glory. Margaret Gillies's portrait is so different from other images of writers of the period. When you compare it to the image above me, one of his favourite portraits by Samuel Lawrence, I mean, the first thing you notice in that, the eyes are rather coyly turned away. Not here. They grab you. They bore into you. Those eagle eyes, as Elizabeth Barrett Browning put it. And the way he looks at you, He's drawing you into his world. Margaret Gillies is not just sensitively and convincingly capturing the features of what's in front of her in the form of Charles Dickens, but also the inner man, the genius that lies behind him. This is the most extraordinary discovery around Charles Dickens in this century, it really is. And for this portrait, not only to come back into the public realm, but to find a home here in the Charles Dickens Museum so that it can become part of a permanent collection and available for the public to see into the future. This is an extraordinary opportunity for us.